When I drove the DB9 earlier this year, I remember thinking, why would anyone buy the Vanquish? I mean, they're the same size, they look pretty much the same, they have the same engine, same power, same top speed, and yet the Vanquish is £60,000 more expensive. It just seemed potty. But now, Aston Martin have said that this has been made a lot, lot better. This is the result, the Vanquish S. The idea is that you buy a DB9 if you want to loop across Europe. And then one of these, if you want a bare knuckle, pedal to the metal thrash, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> so how then have they created this new sportiness? It looks the same as the old car from the outside and the interior is pretty similar as well. So, you're probably expecting the engine to be some kind of nitroglycerine fueled rocket. Let's have a look. Nope. They fiddled with it a bit, but in essence, it's the same six litre V12 you get in the DB9. Sounds pretty much the same as before, and at £174,000, it also costs pretty much the same as well. So at this point, you're probably wondering, have they actually done anything significant at all? Well, they've lowered the ride height, stiffened up the suspension and quickened up the steering, but the simple answer is no. However, if you really concentrate, you can tell that all those little changes add up to make a big difference. I mean, watch this. <laughs> Flat out, you'll be doing more than 200 miles an hour. And it stops better too, because it now has brakes which aren't made from old biscuit barrels. But what about the stupid flappy paddle gearbox? Well, they say they've cracked it with the Vanquish S, so let's find out. Let's just stop, put it into first. Now, if I put my foot down in the old car, I'd just get a lot of smoke from the clutch. Let's just try this. Okay. Up changes are still ludicrously jerky though. And it still won't change down when I want it to. Come on, I want second now, now, now. I paid for the car. I want to choose when to change the gear, not you. I know best. I have to say though that apart from the gearbox, this is way better than it was before. It feels faster, taller, and harder. So there's no doubt they have moved it away from the DB9. Unfortunately, however, that means they've moved it right into the firing line of one of the biggest names in the business. What we have here is a Ferrari 575. Like the Aston, it's a big, two-seater, no-compromise sports coupe with a V12 engine at the front, a flappy paddle gearbox in the middle, and rear-wheel drive at the back. And like the Aston, it has recently been given a thoroughgoing over to make it a bit more of a brute. When the 575 first came out, it was a soft, quiet, rather wallowy old Hector. Now, they fixed that quite quickly, and now they've fixed the fix with what they're calling the GTC Handling Pack. For an extra £16,000, you get thicker anti-roll bars, stiffer suspension, fatter tyres and ceramic brakes. You also get a new exhaust, so it sounds like a Ferrari should.
to say the changes have really sharpened this thing up. This has got a much, much better gearbox than the one in the Aston. Still flappy paddles, but less jerky on the way up and faster on the way down. And better still, if you're a serious driver, you can have a proper manual with a clutch pedal. This is really designed for, you know, posers, people who've got carpet warehouses in Huddersfield who just want to show off to the mates at golf club. Hey, I've gone, I've got one of them gearboxes like Michael Schumacher. So, what do we reckon? On paper, these two cars are incredibly similar. They both cost about the same, they both produce more than 500 brake horsepower, and they'll both crack 200 miles an hour. To decide which is best, we need to do some back-to-back -back tests, and that means I need another driver for the other car. There's only one man for the job, Rowan Atkinson. Sadly, Rowan was busy, so I called an old mate of mine. He's a big petrol head. Steve Coogan. The first test we have is a simple drag race. We did a braking test, and once again, the Ferrari was the winner. But the big deciding factor is how these cars make you feel. So what we're really saying, then, is that for a thrashing round on a test track, the Ferrari's the better car. Yeah, definitely, yeah. But we think it's a bit flash and a bit boring now. Yeah, and also they needed to the stylings. The, the, you know, the last nice, I think the 355 was nice, but all those Daytonas and Dinos had real style, and there's something just a bit. I don't think these will age well. It, given the choice, I'd have one of those. Yeah. So, um, should, we, should we arm wrestle for it? It's, um, it's controversial. I know, and Kugan agreed. Yeah. So, you both agreed, you'd have the Vanquish. Do you know what? I would actually save the £60,000 and have the DB9 still. Really? I really would. The problem with this is its gearbox. It's just... It's still oh. that bad. Oh, no, bad. Robert Mugabe is bad. <laughs> this is just in a way different league of badness. That's very bad. It's appalling. No, I mean, the thing is, after I'd finished with it, gave it to the stick, halfway around the lap, it stopped selecting third, went back to the factory, got fixed, came down, he set off again, it stopped selecting all gears, back to the factory again. So did it ever actually manage a complete yeah. lap? Yeah, finally, three weeks after it first set off, it finally managed to do a lap. And we've got it for you now. <laughs> Oh, slow off the line, obviously trying to keep the gearbox in one piece before he gets down to the first corner, which he is approaching now. It's quite tidy through there. Still, the gearbox has worked all the way down to Hammerhead, so that's not bad. Going around that, he's got an awful lot of understeer there. My God. Because it is quite a heavy car, you have to remember that. It is one of the greatest noises in the world that that thing makes. Here he is, second to last corner, kissing the apex perfectly, and round the last corner and across the line. And the time is 1 minute 27.1, which goes... <laughs> oh, and off the line, he's leaving a huge fat number 11, because, of course, the gearbox in that can take the power through the first corner. Look how flat that's cornering. It looks just so much more nimble than the Aston. Again, he'll have to lift. He has to lift through the tyre wall. Of course, the paddle gearbox is better in this than it is in the Aston, but that is like saying that rabies is better than botulism as he comes round the last corner and across the line. And the time is 1.26.8. <laughs> so... It's actually only 0.3 of a second faster than the Vanquish, only 0.3 of a second faster than the DB9. Oh, I was okay. expecting more than that, I must be honest.